You're listening to Rise to Your Purpose, a personal and spiritual development podcast for female entrepreneurs with a mission. We're your hosts, Brandy and Natalie. Welcome to episode 30 of Rise to Your Purpose. I want to ask you a question. Do you feel like you are surrounding yourself with the right people who actually want to see you win? Are you investing in yourself personally so that you can grow daily and become a better version of yourself? If not, then I really want to encourage you to start stepping out and taking action to remove those people in your life who are not, you know, giving you love that you're worthy of and are not lifting you up, that are draining you and no longer serving you. It's okay to to say goodbye or step away from people. And I also want to give you permission to take some time to love yourself and invest in yourself and your future. On today's episode, I introduce you to my friend Ashley Moss, and she is the co-founder of the Abundance Movement, Um, and she shares her story of stepping out and away from toxic relationships and into a new life that is just full of love, abundance, and happiness. So enjoy. Hey friends, thank you guys so much for joining. I'm Brandy, one of the creators of Victorious Entrepreneurs Rising, the Rise Your Purpose program and this podcast. And we are so excited about helping women of faith in the online marketing space grow their business to create mission-driven businesses with a kingdom impact. And so today I'm so excited to introduce you to my friend, Ashley Moss, and she is the co-founder of the Abundance Movement, which is an exclusive online coaching community that focuses on women empowerment Thank you so much, Ashley, for joining us, and I'm so excited to be discussing our topic of investing in your personal development and surrounding yourself with people who want to empower you and not take your power away. Your story is just very inspirational, and so I'm really excited for our audience to hear from you today. So I'd love you to just dive in and, you know, tell us about yourself and how you got to this coaching space. Tell you all the things. Yeah, it was all the things. It was the dirty details. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think you guys want to know all yeah. that. <laughs> Whatever you want to share, it's fine. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's see. How do we? How do we start this? There is. It's a massive, crazy journey. My life, like many of you, right. we are. We we all go through things in life, but essentially, I I like to start by saying that I feel like. I found myself again in 2018 after giving birth to my twins. So it was a year after I had given birth to them and I was going through some pretty significant postpartum depression. I was in a very narcissistic, abusive relationship um, where I was financially and emotionally abused every single day. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point where it really impacted my mindset. It impacted the way I saw myself. And if any woman has ever been in a situation that makes them feel unworthy, they know what it does to Mm -hmm. our psychological self and our physical self. And I just felt like I had lost every single bit of who I was growing up. And, you know, growing up, I was always, I always felt very empowered, um, just based off of, I'm, I'm the oldest child. Okay. So I feel like it's, it's pretty common when you're, when you grow up as the oldest sibling mm-hmm. to, to feel like you're in charge or yeah. like you're setting an example or any of those things. So that's just the way I grew up. And even when my parents divorced and they were going through, um, bankruptcy and like all of these different things I always was the person that held the family together mm-hmm. I was always the person that they looked up to for support my mom went through some pretty severe depression and um had tried to commit suicide and so I felt like I was the one that had to take control and that's how I was my entire life I went to college I graduated with honors and I was just always on a on a mission to be better and so when I became a mom and I had married somebody who just didn't see that for me um it it killed me like it literally I feel like I almost 
lost my, my life because I didn't even know who I was anymore. And so um, after battling severe depression, I finally, one day, I just like I drew my line in the sand and I just said, you know what, there's got to be a better way to live than feeling sad every single day mm -hmm. or feeling like I can't, I'm not worthy every single day. And I just started to research like all the YouTube videos, all the things and, and like people that were inspirational and podcasts. And it was the first time I ever heard about a podcast. Yeah. And I was like, what the frick is this magic? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just started to really focus one day at a time at just being a little bit better than I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I dove a hundred percent into just finding me again. And during that process, I spent thousands of dollars on my own personal development through conferences, through starting my own business, through, you know, different ways that I could just, you know, coaches and all these different things. And little by little, I just started to feel that passion again in my life. So that's kind of like how I got started on my path. And I feel it's a very common theme with women, especially who are on a path to becoming the best version of themselves. It's, it's like they hit this rock bottom in their life and they want more. Right. So that was, that was me. <laughs> yes. I think that's such a true statement. And I know I can relate. And I know many of our listeners can relate too. Because we do, and especially if you have been in, in abusive environments, which I've been had that in my background as well, and and just tr you have to like totally reframe, rebuild your mindset and your belief systems and your thought patterns, and it is a lot of work, and it's so important too, especially as women, and it's more important as entrepreneur women, to have that support system and feel worthy enough to say, no, I am going to invest in myself and I am going to align myself with people who truly do want me to succeed, who want me to feel my worth and know my worth and find my true identity again. And I think that's so powerful that you took that action step to find those people to surround yourself with them. And that's, to me, is so just inspirational that you didn't let your circumstances overtake you and keep you from rising and reaching your true potential so thank you for sharing your story on that i would love i know you have like this mission around empowering women and um the abundance movement and so i would love for you to just share more about that movement that you're creating and how it works um, and how to get people involved oh yes heck yeah okay <laughs> so the Abundance Movement is a monthly subscription box that is designed for women who are on the path of loving themselves wholeheartedly, to live an absolute abundant life in all parts of their journey. It's, it's owning your past, it's owning your present, and really getting clear on what you're, you want your future to be. And for me, when I started to my own personal development journey, I had to get clear on what my limiting beliefs were because my limiting beliefs were stemmed from something that I was told each and every day. And they were things that I chose to believe about myself. And so it was shifting that mindset and shifting that relationship with, with myself and seeing that I wasn't all these things I filled my heart with and my head with. It was, I was way I was, I was worthy and I was capable of actually creating a mission and, and leading a purpose-driven life. And I had this idea for the subscription box back in January, 2020, it was pre-COVID. I was seven months pregnant with, with, actually I was like six months pregnant with my daughter. And I just decided, you know what? I've been doing all these things to make me feel happy. I want to give this to other women too. And so I reached out to publishers. I reached out to authors like Rachel Hollis and Judy Holler and, and so many people. And I just presented them with my idea. And I just said, Hey, I have this idea. Are you, will you partner with me? And can I get your books? Can I get your journals? And every single person I asked said yes, every single one. But it was because I had shown up every single day for my life for a year and a half prior and I was so clear on who I wanted to impact and 
who I got to help in the process that they just believed in what I was creating. So I remember having a conversation with Judy Holler, like her and I talk weekly. I don't know if you guys know who she is, but she, she wrote Fear is My Homeboy. Okay. And she contributed a bunch of, a bunch of her workbooks to the boxes and just has been so amazing with helping me like get the message out there. And it's really cool because <laughs> when you can find people of influence like that, that are like backing you 100,000%, it's like the most amazing thing ever. And, um, it was two months right before I launched my boxes for the first month. And it was April of 2020. I had filed for divorce mm -hmm. and that was just like my final that was like what allowed me to step into this space of like, this is me, this is who I get to be, and this is who I get to become. And I love myself, you know, like I love myself. And sometimes like people are like, that's so selfish and conceited, but it's not. Like when you can finally see like where you started from and like how much you would look in the mirror and just say like, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I'm ugly, I'm fat, like I'm this and that. And, never going to make an impact and you and you actually wake up in the morning and you're like I'm so grateful for my life mm -hmm. I am so grateful for the things that I have I I love everything about me I love the mission I'm creating I love the women I'm impacting it's such a different energy fit shift that people feel and that was really my goal with the boxes and within the first month of launching my subscription box I sold out in 13 days 150 boxes and so many different companies reached out to me before this because they're like you should do paid advertising you should do this you should do that but I never once paid a single penny for advertising it's just something that I just believed I got to do and I sold out in 13 days and that's like totally unheard of like in the subscription box world right and from that moment, it was like, my, my divorce is final this Friday. And it's just like, all these things just came into alignment because I chose to become better. Yes. <laughs> I no, I love that. And I am on this whole self love is journey this year. Like that's my hashtag self love is my is my 2020 hashtag for the year. And it is true. Like, I came from a place where I was in the season of pruning and like doing so much for everybody else that I left myself and was like, who am I? And what do I actually want? And how can I show up and create an impact in a way that's authentic to me and my true potential that, you know, God's given me this message. How do I share it with the world? And, and, you know, on this journey, it's like self-love is not selfish. Like you said, it, you have to love yourself. You have to have that confidence so that you can go out and create that impact and you can grow out, share your message with people. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't really serve in the highest potential to your community around you. If you're burnt out, like when I was in my season of burnout, I wasn't helping anybody. I was just all in my own misery and wasn't helping anybody wasn't able to show up and serve people. And if I did show up, I wasn't showing up a hundred percent. And so I think it is so important that we do keep sharing the message that loving yourself is not selfish. It is like a must. It is like the top of your to-do list and like should be a priority because from that love, when you're, and that Rachel Hollis, if you're a fan with her, you know her analogy where she's like, if you're filling your vase with love, then love is going to overflow onto everything around you. Versus if you're tipping your vase out, you're eventually going to break and crack and you're going to have nothing. And so I just think that's such a powerful statement that you said. And I thank you for saying that too. Um, so I would love for you to share what actions can women take to regain their power if they're feeling lost or, you know, if somebody's knocked them down how do they get their power back and feel empowered to, to just go out and work their purpose so for me i know everyone has a different journey on how they how they go through this but for me taking that power back was just saying to myself and envisioning my future if i hadn't made any changes in my life if i 
like I started to do vision exercises and like meditations and I started to like look at what my life was going to be like if I didn't make changes and I didn't see myself living like yeah. five years from now. And when I would look at like my future life, they tell you, what do you smell? What do you hear? Who's around you? Who are the people that love you? And I just couldn't see beyond like five years. And I knew that I couldn't live that life anymore. And it was, it was just a time where it was, for me, it was choosing to walk away from a marriage that wasn't serving me. It was the best thing I ever did for my soul ever. And, oh, and I, the big, the hardest thing for me was too, I come from a very religious back, like my family is very religious and his family was really religious and my family backed me 100%. They had, they held no judgment, but his family held so much judgment for our choice in separating because it was a choice that we collectively came together and we said, you know what? We aren't helping each other. Like we're not, we're not growing together mm -hmm. and it's okay to walk away. Yeah. And I had so much feedback, like God is going to show you and like, yeah. you're going to go to hell and all these things. I'm like, no, -uh. like God wants me to be happy. Yeah. He doesn't want me to be miserable. Otherwise he wouldn't have put me through these situations in life to make me learn more about who I am as a woman. You know, all of these things led me to this point in life. And you can either choose to look at it as like bad cards that were dealt to you, or you can choose to make it the reason that you empower others to live more. It's all on your perspective. Mm -hmm. It's all based on your perspective in life. Everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So that's, that's my, seriously, it's like, if you, if you aren't happy with where your life is today, do you think you're going to be happy if you don't make a change? Like if you're going to live, you're going to be in the same spot five years from now. <laughs> wow. So true. And I love that. Like just envisioning yourself. What do you, what is going to, if you don't change, if you don't take no action, where will you be? Versus if you do take action, where do you want to be? And then you can back step like, okay, here's where I want to be in five years. Now, what are the action steps? What are those milestones that I need to get to, to get to that ideal? Then? Um, and there's so many coaches out there. There's so many people out there that if you're struggling with that, like reach out to myself, reach out to Ashley, like there are so many people who want to help you reach that vision for, you know, a positive life, for a happy and abundant and loving life. Because I'm with you, like, I don't really believe in religion. I believe in a relationship and, and the relationship that God wants us to have is not one of like damning and no, he wants to love his children. He wants us to come and have sit on his lap and have everything that a father wants to give to their children. Um, and so I, just for those women out there who are struggling with feeling worthy, with feeling empowered, with feeling like they can take action steps, like please reach out to somebody who you trust, who has your best interests at heart, who can give you those action steps and hold your hand along the way if you don't have the strength to do it. There are so many women out there that want to be your shoulder to lean on, that want to hold your hand through this journey. So you don't have to do it alone. Um, and so I just want to put that message out there for those of you who are listening. Um, Ashley, thank you so much for everything you've shared. I would love for you to t tell us where can people find you and how can they, you know, if they want to get involved with your subscription box, how, how does that work? So I will say like all of the subscription boxes, every single month, it features a, a coach. So awesome. The, the boxes themselves, they're $49.95 a month. You get a discount for your first month using Abundant 15, but essentially every single box comes with a coach. So it's the only interactive subscription box that exists out there today. And you're getting a free one-on-one -on -one consultation or conversation with a life coach, an intuitive coach, a Reiki coach, like all the coaches have different backgrounds and, mm -hmm. and different expertise like there is healing and all these different kinds but um like for example this month it's all around self-acceptance so owning your past present and and getting clear on your future and she is giving an hour of her time for free to have those conversations with the women that are stuck in their past mm -hmm. and that want to or stuck in their present 
and don't know the action steps that they get to make in order to get them to where they want to be. So we always have a monthly featured coach every, every dang month. And they always offer like free workshops or uh, workbooks or anything that's going to help you even deeper with your mindset. All of, there's always like four or six actual products in the boxes that are all cultivated and made by small business, women owned businesses throughout the U S and Canada. So you know that you're supporting small women owned businesses. So even if you were interested in becoming a featured coach or being a vendor in one of these boxes, you can always go to abundancemovementboxes.com, contact me. And there's a whole vendor form or a coaching form in there. Otherwise you can subscribe and get all of these things. You'll also get like a workbook or a journal every month that is going to help you as well. So it's, it's like your, it's like self-development in your box. It's your best self in a box. That's what it is. I love it. <laughs> so you can awesome. follow me there. And also on Instagram and Facebook, I go live every single day on my personal page. So you can just follow my personal page. Actually, Ma, just follow it. Awesome. For yeah, daily info. I will drop those links too. For sure. That's so awesome. All right. And I'm- yeah, like the, the last thing too is like 10% of all of our boxes sold goes towards helping end human and sex trafficking. Yes. So you are also taking a stance against that as well. And yes. I'm so glad you brought that up because I did want to talk about that. I, I forgot. I didn't have that note down. So yes, thank you so much because I think that is such an amazing charity and movement to be partnered with. Um, and I just, yeah, I love everything about your subscription box, like the personal development, the coaching, the, your mission and your movement. And I just think it's so powerful. And I'm so grateful to you for coming onto my podcast. And, um, I'm also going to stream this live too, so people can see it in different areas. Um, cause I think we just need to get this message out there. So I'm okay. so excited okay. for you. Um, and I just love that I get to be one of the people who gets to encourage and empower you as well. So um, I have one more question, which is just my fun question. I love asking all my people I interview. Um, what is hashtag self love is to you? What, it, what do you love to do for self care for self love? Holy moly. <laughs> for myself, honestly, I ha- I'm a single mom of three kids, two of which are t- twins, twin three year olds and a four month old daughter. So for me, self-love is doing things for myself so I hire a nanny twice a week so I can get the f out of my house (laughs) right (laughs) sit in a coffee shop in peace and quiet for eight hours and that's what I do and sometimes I'll sit and work and and do the things but usually most of the time I'm listening to podcasts or I am just unwinding unloading because here's the thing is when you're a mom We need to take care of ourselves. Just like you said, you've got to, you've got to put your own oxygen mask on first before you help others. And if you're not doing things for yourself, you're going to burn out. You will burn out. You're going to lose your, your crap on your kids. You're, you're going to do things that aren't going to make you feel good. So you've got to take that time for yourself. And if you can't afford help, a lot of things that I used to do in the past when I couldn't afford help was I'd trade help. Mm -hmm. So I would watch a mom's kid all and she would watch my kids. Like, so we would trade it. (laughs) There's ways you're not alone. There's communities, there's support groups in your areas, like wherever you are, like there are people that are willing to help. You just have to ask for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) I second that. And I'm like, I've got grandma and grandpa daycare and they come in sometimes twice a week for me but that is just a day I can do be productive my type a personality loves loves this day when I can actually do something uninterrupted um yeah and you just feel like it's a time where I can refresh I can journal if I need to if I if my thoughts are going crazy like so I I love that I think that's such a great idea and a great reminder for moms and especially mom entrepreneurs who are trying to do all the things like you don't have to do all the things like there are people out there who love you who support you and like you said find tap into those communities and resources um Mm -hmm. you don't have to be everything to everybody so another message to to send out to the ladies listening today so (laughs) 
Thank you again, Ashley, so much. And thank you to everybody who was able to listen in today. Yay. Thank you for having me on. <laughs>